it does occur to me that I have my journal and I got two entries the last time I played through this, so I should probably read about it. Like this favorite word of mine that I can't pronounce. Stratigraphy. Stratigraphy is the study of the layers of rocks and sediment. It is used in both geology and archaeology fields. By distinguishing the layers, it's possible to build a chronological sequence and understand the context of the deposited sediments and what lies within them. In the Couche de Merde. This is the top layer that needs to be stripped away before real work can begin. It has been compressed, walked on, and mixed from human activity. Anything found within the layer, such as a tooth, will be placed in the bag. No context will be measured. Okay. Oh, right. We gotta go help our buddy Deandre. Once I had finished preparing the plates and cutlery, I returned to the kitchen. Deandre stewed soup. I thought that said soap. <laughs> stewed soup in a giant pot resting over a single burner stove. I'd quickly learned that lunch always consisted of sandwich ingredients, along with a serving of soup. Finish setting up the tables. Thanks, Mel. I'm so grateful that you volunteered and all. Oh, he's already calling us Mel. It's no problem. Glad to be of help. He tapped the top of the pot with the stirring spoon to get the liquid off. Do you cook often? You seem rather skilled. I don't know if stirring soup is considered a skill. At least you seem to know what you're doing. Hmm. I've been cooking seriously since... First year of university, perhaps? I mean, before I could do the basic prep or throw f frozen meals into a microwave. <laughs> Once I moved to New Zealand, I sort of picked up cooking while living in the dorms. Eating out is pretty expensive, and I needed to keep a strict diet. A strict diet? I'm guessing you work out or participate in sports. Ah, so you're gonna be into the catch thing, aren't you? I'll be doing a lot of catch. You ain't wrong. Training and weightlifting are part of my regimen. I'm a rugby player. Ah. Oh, that's neat. What position do you usually play? I'm a lock. Uh. Is it obvious that I know nothing about rugby? I'm guessing you don't know much about union rugby. Not really. Sorry. I know it's similar to football. Uh, American football, but without the padding. Um... Basically, the locks provide the power and heights. Break through the fences, jump high in lineouts, and... It sounds like every position? Oh... I lost you again, didn't I? At lineout. What's a lineout? <laughs> well, let's start with lock. Anyway, locks have to get the ball at whatever cost. He extended his arms, pretending to read for me, and made a primitive grunt. Mm. Roar. Aggressive. Must get possession of ball. <laughs> well, not as aggressive as flankers. You never want to be tackled by those. <laughs> I'm trying to decide not to ask what a flanker was either, and gently shifted the topic. Where did you learn how to play rugby? Well, I grew up always playing it. Even joined a local rugby club, but moved to New Zealand to hone my skills even further. Out of all the countries in the world, why New Zealand? If I recall, you went there to study, right? How is that related to rugby? I went there because one of the universities in Wellington offered a program that combined its rugby culture with education. He grinned like a child, reminiscing about their Christmas presents. I got to enroll there for a few trimesters, along with free tickets to elite games and a gym membership to where the top-notch rugby players trained. That sounds awesome. Not only that, I got to participate in their practice sessions. I learned lots down there. It was pretty sweet as. It was expensive, though, and my visa expired. I guess it was inevitable, though. And now I'm finishing up my degree in Liege. What degree are you working on? English. It all sounds pretty heavy duty. How do you balance both rugby and your English degree? You're not just focusing on your rugby career? As much as I love rugby, too much can happen on the field. This is true. One traumatic or hard-hitting injury and your career is over. Even with the best physio, you may not play as well as you did before. I figured if something were to happen, I could always teach English as a foreign language to fellow... The pot bubbled, and DeAndre softly cursed. 
curses. He grabbed the spoon and stirred again to prevent the ingredients from settling on the bottom. Phew, nearly forgot about this. Guess time does fly when you're having a conversation. What's the time? I checked my phone display. About time for the students to eat. I'll get the cold cuts and drinks out now. Thanks. The soup looks about ready. He turned off the burner and we focused on organizing lunch. I glanced at DeAndre as he happily hollered to the students coming down the stairs from the forest trail. Sounds like he figured things out. Now I gotta focus on what I'd like to do. Aw, oh, you'll get it, Melissa. I succeeded! Come on, inquire. I fail. I don't understand French. I'm sorry. But I can play games like a boss. Woo! Come on. I fail again, meh. What is a catch level again? I can't remember. Hmm. Starting to sound rowdy over there. I could even hear the hollering and cheering over the video game music. A large silhouette appeared near my tent and I yanked out my earbuds. Mel, are you around? Over here. I'm in the yellow tent. He gave the tent's flap a knock, rattling the fabric. I zipped it open and poked my head out. <laughs> knock, knock. Hey, you got your original shirt with the anchor on again. Awesome. Something up? I thought you'd rather socialize than hole yourself up in your tent. Want to break some language barriers? He held out a raspberry-flavored beer bottle and swayed it before me. Raspberry-flavored? Sounds awesome. I'd like to try that. Although by the end we'll all be incoherent anyway. Ah yes, drinking. A universal pastime. <laughs> Should I join in? We're not gonna decline. Our boy's asking us out. The question is, are we gonna be a prude and party responsibly, which is what I would do? Or live it up. I mean, we gotta part. We gotta try this raspberry beer, right? Let's let's party. <laughs> I accepted the offering, relieved I recently checked my blood sugar levels. Oh right, I have diabetes. I should probably be aware of that. Why not? I want to see how you guys party compared to California. Well, there's no oceans or white sands here, but we know how to have a good time. Uh oh, I feel a sneeze coming on. <coughs> oh no. Ugh. Are you done, sneeze? Okay. I stood up and we clicked drinks. Still, I was a little nervous joining a bunch of strangers. At least I had DeAndre to hang out with, but the socializing didn't go well. I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> That's where I go. It didn't go fine. Ugh, that was pathetic. <coughs> I lowered myself down unsteadily, almost falling on my rear in the process. Oh, Melissa, how much did you drink? My hand clumsily groped against the tense fabric, trying to find a way in. Where's the entrance? I spent the evening. Man, apparently it goes through the screen. I spent the evening attempting to socialize, but it was fruitless. The whole time I awkwardly stood at the edge of a group or wandered around unable to join in conversation. Oh no! I ended up occupying my time by nursing a few beers instead, pretending to enjoy myself. Maybe I drank the last one too fast. I wasn't drunk, but I was definitely dizzy and lightheaded. DeAndre? Maybe? Are you having trouble? Yes! Oh, DeAndre. I pawed against the green tent again and broke into a giggle. <laughs> it was hard to control my emotions. I can't locate the doorknob. Uh, how much did you drink? I don't know. A few. A few more. Maybe more. It was a disaster. No one talked to me. Realizing my outburst, I took a deep breath to calm myself. Oh, DeAndre looks very concerned. I'm sorry. I'm clingy and whiny when tipsy. DeAndre knelt down beside me in concern and put a hand on my shoulder. Hey, um, didn't mean to leave you alone earlier. Got caught up talking to a few others and, uh... No, it's not your fault. 
You're not obligated to stick with me the whole time. I should have checked on you at least being new here and all. I shook my head, then immediately regretted it as my balance went off kilter. Fortunately, DeAndre's hand was still on my shoulder and he ended up supporting me. I love this face right now. He's like, whoa, she's really gone. Whoops. <laughs> I guess I should sleep. Thanks. DeAndre reached over to open the green tent, but hesitated. Yeah, I'm like, didn't I have a yellow tent? I could be wrong, but this is your tent, right? <laughs> now that he mentioned it, although I'd love to know whose tent it is, but now that he mentioned it... Wait, this isn't my tent. Mine is... I gestured to my left. I bet. I'm gonna make a prediction that it's Kyler's tent. <laughs> I just to my left. Lucky I asked. Here, let's get you to your real bed. Oh, sleepy. DeAndre, with one arm still around me, unzipped the tent. I felt a sturdy hand on my back as I clumsily crawled forward. My knee caught on the edge, causing me to flop over. <laughs> I burst into a giggle over my own antics. DeAndre held the flap to make sure I was okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for taking care of her, DeAndre. Jeez, you're out of it. Here, let me move that bag aside. I collapsed over the sleeping bag, my eyes already closed. A hand touched my forehead and brushed my bangs back. A little warm, but you should be fine for tomorrow. I felt the fabric being tugged beneath me until it covered me. I hope you don't kick it off. It's going to be chilly tonight. I heard the tent zip up as I snuggled under the sleeping bag, my flushed face feeling better against the cool pillow. Bonne nuit. That's the only thing I- Good night! Good night, DeAndre! I love you. I sat at the table, munching on a piece of toast. It was pretty packed, and as usual, I was located near the end, while the livelier conversations took place in the middle. A short glass slid into my view, water rippling in it. Morning. Slept well, I hope. I decided not to bring up the whole wrong tent incident. <laughs> I did. I don't even have a headache. Oh, instead of consuming too much, you drank too fast. I picked up the glass and took a sip. Thanks for the water. Merci. Do it in. Think of it as a small apology for last night. Hmm? Oh, don't worry about it. You're not my babysitter, and I should have been more aware of my drinking. Thanks for escorting me back, though. I appreciate it. I did what any decent person would do. Besides, you're in a new country. I think you're allowed to enjoy yourself once in a while. That was my reasoning. <laughs> Party hard in New Zealand or something? Did I ever. I was glad I arrived a month before classes started, or it would have shown in my grades. Also... I finally will be working in the cave! Nice! Were you waiting on your photograph? Yep. Some squares had to have their pictures retaken for better resolution. I may or may not work in the lab longer, though. Mr. DuPont will be hurrying to approve other students' pictures, too. You could always ask Sherry. I think she has some authority here, too. Sherry? Sherry Keller, my professor. Of course, Americans address teachers by their first name. Is it different here? Really different. In fact, I think some students mistook Sherry for your grandma. A professor overseeing their students in an elective? Unheard of. I kind of thought she was Melissa's grandma too, to be honest, the way they treated each other, but apparently not. No one calls their teachers by their first name, and it's always strictly formal. If you want to talk to your professor, it's by appointment only. Huh. I wonder how I do in an environment like that. That's one thing I missed about New Zealand. It wasn't as rigid, and I'd gotten so used to it I practically had reverse culture shock coming back. There's a lot of things I miss in New Zealand. Planning to return there one day? You bet. Eventually I started saving up recently. Travel is darn expensive. 
He laughed at my nod of agreement. The plane tickets here alone had cleaned out my savings. Everything else was from begging my parents to fund me for this trip. Checking the time, I chewed the last of my toast and gulped down the water. Ah, let me do that. Ugh. I'll see you at the cave, then. After I study... Success! Come on, inquire. I finally succeeded in inquiring! Game? Oh, I failed. Oh no, how did I fail at gaming? Ugh. Aren't you sure you'll be fine alone? Yeah, my parents got all concerned when they learned I no longer have a traveling partner. I was uh, strongly advised not to go off on my own since it's my first time being this far from home. Although I tried to be nonchalant about it, my sulkiness still surfaced. It's probably for the best. However, I'm sure you'll make friends and be able to venture out more. If you'd like, I can ask some of the students to see if they're interested in hosting you on the weekends. Me? I'd hate to impose. I know you're reluctant, but it would be nice to spend time with students outside the dig site. True, and see more of Belgium, too. It's a shame Paige couldn't make it. Where are you staying, anyway? Oh, and a colleague's. I've known him and his husband for years. I would bring you along, but it's a small house, and, uh... She trailed off, and I nodded understandingly. I did not want to impose on her catch-up time with friends. Will the museum be completely locked up once Augustine leaves? Everything's safe for the back entrance so you can access it. You can lock it from the inside at night. I imagine you'll be sleeping on the second floor. Yes, Augustine already set up an air mattress for me, and I moved some of my belongings. Hmm, I think we've gone over everything then. There's leftovers in the fridge, and the Wi-Fi will remain on. I'm confused. What's happening? Am I not sleeping in a tent anymore or something? I heard the laboratory door opening and closing, and Augustine flashed me a warm smile. All of the other students had left for home for the weekend, and it was just us three. Soon to be one, now that they were ready to depart. Oh. Melissa, I assume Sherry has gone over everything. Yes. Wonderful. Also, this is the first time in many years someone had remained here alone. There was an ominous yet playful smirk, and I could not help but be wary. Why? They are scared of the wrath of the Neanderthal, whose bones we found. I think I'll survive these 48 hours, Augustine. What a brave girl. I hear it gets very eerie at night. We exchanged goodbyes, and I heard the clicking of the front door being locked. When it got very quiet, I pushed the thought of ghosts out of my head. I have a whole museum to myself. I bet not many people can say that. I think I would have a freaking panic attack if I was here by myself. Huh. The lights are on. Is someone here? What's all this? There were multiple wooden trays laid out on the center table. Each contained various rock samples, along with paper slips labeled under each one. I approached and peered at the trays. Calcer, Deschis, Grey... Are they studying something, or would this be a part of another upcoming lecture? Um... Pick up a rock... I thought I was alone here! I don't think I should just touch stuff, though. I'm gonna get prepared. I should ask first before I start picking up museum property. Nestled against the wall was a small table. Usually it was bare, but now there was a laptop and someone seated in front of it. Ooh. Um, excuse me, moi. Oh! Hey, it's last guy! <laughs> ah, finally. I think this is the longest it's ever taken to meet all the romance people. Alright. And you are? Oui. Comment bouger Taïda? Je n'ai parlé pas français. Sherry student, I presume? He approached me casually and stood beside the table. Nice stats, by the way. Yes, I'm Melissa Flores, studying under Sherry. Pleased to meet you. He offered his left hand, and I accepted it with a firm shake. Hmm, left-handed. Ah, oh, you're Hendrik. Okay. 
Hendrik. Hendrik Lukenhui. How, how, how do you pronounce the last one? Lukenhui? Lukenhui? Lui? Hundred Luke and he are hundred at your service. Hundred. Hundred, the geologist, Augustine's nephew. That's me. I was supposed to be here earlier, but was caught in a landslide of work back in Germany. Thought I'd catch up on a few things before Monday. He jutted his chin toward the samples. Were you going to ask about those? Yes, I didn't want to poke around without permission. Can I? Feel free to look around if you'd like. Merci! I picked a rock up, the one labeled Calcare. This material was everywhere in the cave. Limestone. I placed it down and examined one beside it labeled Shale. Where did this collection come from? From one of the cabinets? It's mine, actually. Many of the rocks are ones I've dug up or personally found. I thought it'd be nice to have some examples to show the students here. Especially if they can't tell the difference between shirt and shale yet. And what is the difference? He eagerly motioned me over to the tray, picking up a dark rock and offered it to me. It felt grainy in my hand. First off, shale is composed of silt and clay, and it's a very soft rock. You've probably seen shale at road cuts or by the riverbanks. And this is chert. You can already note the waxy luster, and it's much harder than shale. I held the sample in my other hand. It also felt smoother than shale, almost like glass. Oh. Do you hurt your arm or something? Or do you just wear that for fashion? <laughs> this is what you need to keep an eye out for. A lot of stone tools were crafted out of chert. Fortunately, they tend to stand out like new when you uncover them. I can tell you've given this lecture many times. I'm guessing most students here have never worked with rocks before. Yep, many are into art, computers, or music. I returned the rocks to their rightful spot. What were you doing in Germany? Pretty much what I do here. Supervise excavators, examine and compile soil samples, figure out the stratigraphy. I essentially chalk out a map of the cave to study the sediments and its history. That sounds difficult. You'd think sedimentary formations would be more straightforward. Older on the bottom, more recent on the top? You'd think, but geology is never that schnee and easy. Schnee and easy? Um, how to best describe this? Do you like cake? <laughs> I enjoy it sometimes. Of quartz, I like cake. Oh, the puns are too good. Cake? Of course. Quartz, I like it. <laughs> he chuckled at my pun. At least he appreciated the silly effort. You'll be able to follow along then. It's pretty sedimentary, after all. Okay, he's a punny guy. What are the chances you've tried a Prinzregententort? Prinzreg. Prince. What is that? Pri Prinzregententort? I guess it must be a dessert of some sort, since he asked if we like cake. Uh, very low. Non-existent, in fact. I don't even know how to pronounce that. Then... Black Forest? Less layers than I'd like, but you get the idea. Yes, I'm familiar with it. It'll work as long as I picture a multi-layered cake, right? Exactly. Cakes are like basic sediments. Consistent layers and patterns all around. Unlike cake, stratigraphy is a complex puzzle. Hendrik makes multi or made multiple slices in the air with his hand, gradually lowering the elevation each time to emphasize the point. Layers are slanted due to how they were deposited, whether by alluvial means, weathering, freeze-thaw, gravity, cave-ins... The list goes on. And then, just as a sediment starts to settle, a river or flood may come in and wash the top surface away leaving nothing or portions of the same layer in isolated pockets. Badgers and other burrowing animals cut through layers, disrupting sediments further. Or something drastic could take place, like an earthquake, creating faults in misaligned sediments. Therefore, it's up to me to figure it out. I hope I didn't bore you. 
People have always said I'm married to my job. It wasn't boring at all, honest. If anything, it made me realize how much work goes into understanding the cave's history. Yeah, thank you. It's definitely not easy, but I enjoy the challenge of piecing information together. Since I'm here, I'll be available if you have any other questions or inquiries. He finished the last sentence like a well-rehearsed routine. How long have you worked here? Me? Let me think. Nearly four years now? I helped my uncle during the summer, and then hopped to a few other caves depending on their excavating schedules. After a glance upward, his eyes widened and he slapped his forehead. Uh, I'm supposed to be in Nam Namur soon. I hope I didn't startle you earlier. My uncle did mention there'd be a student staying here on the weekend, but it slipped my mind. Ah. No, that's fine. It was nice finally meeting you, Hendrik. Likewise. I'll be sure to ask you if I have any other geology questions. That's what I'm here for. I'll see you on Monday. See you, Hendrik. It's nice to finally meet the last boy. Hooray, we successfully traversed the town. But failed at looking at museum artifacts. How? Ah! Oh no. Oh. <sighs> All right. Well, time to plan week two, I guess. That wasn't too bad. Um. Right. So, it looks like we got new things we can do. We can go to the cave or the lab. Oh, and they got their pictures next to it. Well, that is super helpful. Oh, we have relationships. Ah, Shoji. Major undecided. Languages French, English. Shy student who enjoys drawing and gaming. DeAndre, who have got a full heart with and a little bit of another one. French, English. English student who loves socializing and a good beer. Mm -hmm. And rugby. Kyler, we have half a heart with. Um, he is majoring in anthropology and he can speak French, Belgian sign language, French and English. And a Louvre square. <laughs> Perfecto. Hendrik, he is a geologist. He can speak Dutch, French, English, and a little German. Your friendly neighborhood geologist who loves helping out. And we've also got equal heart, inadvertently. And Joan is your name. We haven't actually met you officially yet. <coughs> oh my goodness. Big sneezes. Sorry, Joan. She's majoring in music. She speaks French and some English. <laughs> oh my goodness. Joan, why am I so allergic to you? I'm so sorry. Uh, she's apparently a sweet girl currently learning English. And, uh, well, I guess we have socialized with her and that other girl during the week, but we haven't actually spoken as such to her yet. But anyway, okay. Let's plan our week. So DeAndre's going to be in the lab on Monday, so we'll go there. And, oh, he's going to be volunteering with Shoji. So let's volunteer. Oh, you skip. Did I double click? Okay. Oh, okay. Volunteering takes up two slots. Oh, that's all right. Uh, and then we need to go to the lab. Don't have to volunteer. Maybe we should browse the internet and then play catch. And then go to the cave. And then volunteer. And then go to the cave. Catch and then internet is fine. Friday to the lab. Volunteer. Okay, and then what does town do? Town ups our culture, which is apparently what DeAndre wants from us. Museum is rational, nah. Email, nah. Study, nah. Gaming, nah. And dancing lowers our stress, so. Okay, I guess we'll, maybe we'll do two towns and then dance the night away. Yeah, alright. That's what we'll do next week, then.